I'm Ron Clark. Uh, this week, <clears throat> I want to clarify some things about the symbols that we use in and around the Tree of Life. Okay? Mostly having to do with the planets and the numbers of the planets and the colors we use for the Sephiroth. Okay? So, I already did a video in which I said the planets are not the same thing as a Sephiroth. The Sephiroth are the vertical paths on the Tree of Life diagram, the seven vertical paths. But, it brought up questions about, well, what about the numbers of the planets? They match with the Sephiroth. Number three is Saturn, number six is Tiferet, and the sun, and etc. So where do the numbers for the planets come from, if not the tree of life? It has been the question. So, the numbers for the planets are very ancient human cosmology. Um, and here's this diagram. It diagrams basically the most ancient geocentric um, cosmology idea of the universe. The outermost beyond anything we can see is the prime mover, God, deity, okay? The next in is the fixed stars of the zodiac. As we look up from the earth, they're constant. They stay, they move, but ever so slowly, okay? Then there's the stars that move, the planets. You know, eventually we realize that there's the planets. Those aren't stars like the fixed stars. They're the moving planets, okay? So, number one is the prime mover. Number two is the zodiac. Number three is the innermost planet, or excuse me, the outermost planet that we knew of. Saturn, number three. So that's where Saturn gets its number three, not from the Tree of Life. The Tree of Life diagram came probably later than the, this cosmology. The Sefer Yetzira, which is the oldest document, you know, manuscript that we have, that we know of existing, comes from about 100 BC. It's theorized, okay? So the philosophy, the cosmology is obviously older than that, um, <clears throat> but still it has nothing to do with the Sephiroth and the Sephirotic numbers. That is not where their numbers come from. Okay, so in the geocentric view, Saturn is not... <clears throat> now the early conception was not that Saturn, not as we think of it now, Saturn being the uh, farthest out of these seven planets, we now know that there are more planets, but that was not a part of human awareness at the time these symbols evolved, okay? So the outermost planet for us was actually the slowest planet for the ancients. It moved around those fixed stars much more slowly, about 30 years it took to get around all the way around the fixed stars, the zodiac, okay? So, number three, Saturn, the slowest. Number four, Jupiter. It's a little faster. Well, actually quite a bit faster, okay? And then <clears throat> we have Mars. Mars was even faster 
than Jupiter. Okay? That's number five. Number six is the sun. Okay? Remember, this is geocentric. Earth is at the center of this cosmos. Because we are the ones looking out there, trying to decide what it all means. So, sun is number six. And it moves around once a, you know, once a year. One full cycle of the seasons. It moves all the way around. Then comes Venus, which moves around just that ever so much, a little bit faster than, <clears throat> than uh, the sun. Okay? Just a little bit faster. Then there's Mercury, who moves around quite a bit faster than the sun. And then there's our planet. The moon, you know, the moon, whoa, it whips around that zodiac once a month. That's number nine. Mercury is eight and Venus is seven, you know, in order of their speed. And then we have number 10, the earth. Okay, so that is where the numbers of the planets come from. It is not where the numbers of the Sephiroth come from. Okay? <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the colors of the Sephiroth, they are entirely uh, uh, much more modern um, adaptation of a more ancient uh, Tree of Life symbol I'm um, talking about maybe 600 years ago in a Christian European context. We get these colors for the Sephiroth. Now, <clears throat> those colors of the planet, see, we get those colors for the Sephiroth because we are associating the planets with the Sephiroth. So we are attributing these colors to the planets and therefore the Sephiroth. But as I said before, the Sephiroth and the planets are not the same things. The planets are paths, the vertical paths on the tree of life. That's all the planets are. The Sephiroth are something entirely different they emanate the planetary paths, but they are more than their planets, okay? But the colors we use come from the planets. Now, how does that come about? It comes about <clears throat> probably about the same time. Um, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> it's alchemical. It comes from alchemy probably ancient Egyptian alchemy even. Because what these colors are, are the colors of the oxides, the rust basically, of the metals of the planets. Okay? The metal for Saturn is lead. Lead is always associated with Saturn in alchemy. It's very important, that association of the, the noble metals here with, <clears throat> with uh, the planet. So, the oxide, the oxidation on lead is black. Okay? That's why we have black for Saturn. <clears throat> it fits. It really perfectly fits <clears throat> for the meaning of Saturn. Okay? <clears throat> for Jupiter, it's the metal tin. The oxide, the rust on tin, is bluish. Mars, it's iron. And as we all know, the rust on iron is reddish. Okay? Now, the sun is gold, but gold never oxidizes. So the color of the sun is gold or yellow. Either does. Venus, 
the oct is Venus is copper, the metal copper. The oxide of copper, a very degree, is green. Okay? And mercury is the metal mercury, and its oxide is cinnabar, an orange, a sort of a reddish orange. And for the moon, we have silver. That is the metal associated with the moon throughout alchemy. And the oxide of silver is a violet purple. Okay? That is where <clears throat> the colors come from for the planets, which are then associated with the numbers here in this whole little mix we have going of the tree. Okay, that's so the sephirot by virtue of the planets, the the incorrect association of the planets with the sephirot have gotten their colors. They're the colors that I use as well. And I well, except for of course Kether and Bina. I mean Kether and Hokma. But these are following that ancient cosmology. The whole tree follows that ancient cosmology. The order of the planets on the trees, the vertical paths, follows that ancient cosmology. And in effect, the tree does as well because that ancient cosmology was <clears throat> talking in spheres, number one, but it's really talking about different dimensions of existence, okay? And so is the tree of life. And it, they both deal with ten dimensions. That's a common theme throughout much of the ancient cosmology. And as it happens, modern uh, um, quantum mechanics. <clears throat> I'll deal with these ten dimensions. So, <clears throat> by virtue of all of these confused attributions that don't apply, basically, or that are being applied to each other, uh, sort of irrationally, um, the colors actually work. Uh, gray and white, gray for the zodiac fixed stars, Hokma, which sort of fits, and uh, Kether, brilliant white for uh, the prime mover. And so it all fits that ancient cosmology. And it just so happens that the colors actually work. They work. They accurately symbolize the essential meaning of the Sephiroth. Not so well. The planets, in an alchemical sense, work well as these colors, but really strictly in an alchemical sense. Okay? On the tree of life, planetary colors are irrelevant. Okay? That is not why the Sephiroth have these colors when I presented. My presentation of the Gra tree and the Hebrew tree have nothing to do with the planetary colors. I use these colors in the tree because they accurately represent the essential meaning of the Sephiroth. For me, more than they do the planet. Although it's impossible for me to divorce them in my mind because I grew up, you know, I grew up with the trees that everybody else grew up with. Um, but it's vitally important to truly understanding this symbol um, that, you know, can reveal so much if you work with it, vitally important to really understanding it 
if you understand how all of this came together and got mushed into one thing in your mind. Try to divide, separate out these different symbol sets because we're dealing with at least three different symbol sets, perhaps four, that don't really belong together not the way they've been put together at any rate. They belong together if you understand the errors in attributions. If you remove the planets from the Sephirot, it all begins to make sense. That likewise means that you remove the planetary numbers from the Sephirot. So, <clears throat> it changes everything if you let go of everything you learned about the Sephirotic numbers from the Hebrew tree and the Western Hermetic Golden Dawn tree, whichever you, you have grown up with. You know, you got to get rid of that association of Tiferet with the number six, okay? That's really the biggest hurdle. It was the biggest hurdle for me in understanding the tree of life, the Gras tree especially. Once I let go of, once I really let go of it, it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Now that makes sense. That that makes Tiferet make sense. You know, it makes the f number four make sense in so many different ways. There's not any conflict ha happening here because that inaccurate understanding of Tiferet when Tiferet is six instead of four. So, let me see if I can summarize all that for you. So, <clears throat> the numbers of the Sephirot in the Gra tree and in the Hebrew tree do not come from the planets. <clears throat> The numbers of the planets come from the ancient cosmology. That's <clears throat> Archimedes was like 500 BC, something like that. Um, <clears throat> the colors of the planets come from the alchemical colors. Those are the alchemical colors by virtue of each planetary metal's oxidation or rust. That is where the colors of the planets come from. And the colors of the tree of life, the Sephirot, have most of them all come from the same oxides of the metals in alchemy, that is the color of the Sephirot, because the planets have been associated with the Sephirot ever since the uh, Christian, Western, European Christian world has known about the tree of life and assign planets to the Sephirot and colors to the Sephirot. There are no colors in Hebrew Kabbalah, okay, for the Sephirot or for the lettered paths, okay? That just doesn't exist in Hebrew Kabbalah. That is entirely a modern 
adaptation, modern being within the past 600 years, say, adaptation of the Hebrew tree of life, okay? It's important to know that. It's important to be able to know where the symbols you are using come from. You know, it really is important. <clears throat> okay? And in the Hebrew Kabbalah, the planets are not associated with the Sephiroth. So that means the colors we use in the Tree of Life have nothing to do with the ancient Hebrew Kabbalah. They're a modern invention. They're our addition to this symbol. So we need to use them carefully. We need to know the way in which we are using them inappropriately, really. But nonetheless, the colors themselves all work, so it doesn't matter. But you got to retrain your mind when you see these colors to not think instantly of planet. Okay? That's what it comes down to. Okay, that's the end of my rant. <laughs> Hope that was entertaining for this week. Bye-bye. Ah. <sighs>